What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Iggy here with Caltech Unlimited. We're doing a G-Code holster today. Uh, it's going to be a uh, customer that we met off of YouTube, so I'm looking forward to this. Mr. Jose Cancel, this is a shout out to you. So we're going to be uh, filming and building your rig. So we got Smith & Wesson. Uh, it's a 940 compact 4-inch. We're going to do it in gunmetal gray, right-handed. Uh, G-Code setup with TLR7, so this is going to be a fun build. Well, let's get to it. Already got the gun. Already got the light. Mount this bad boy on there. All right. So we're going to be adding the hood and the RTI plate. So let's get that going. When doing a TLR7 or the TLR8, it is a good idea to use the retention as this right here. Some companies use underneath it. I personally don't like that method. So if right here is gonna be where the retention is going to be. Oh, let's get going. So we could do that covered up. I know on this side, all of our retention is gonna be right there. So, and you don't wanna do it this way because you want you want pretty much as much as the bottom of the flashlight to uh, be visible or not visible, but contact the uh, the Kydex. Because if we do it like this and have a lot of it covered, then what's going to happen is this can move up and down. It can wiggle, and if this wiggles, the whole thing will wiggle. So we're going to do it this way, just like so, and then we'll do it on the both side. The other side is going to have uh, pretty much all the retention on the other side, and this side is going to be a pretty much cleaner look which is good because this is the outside portion and let's see here you want to extend it just past the flashlight and then lock that in place Again, if you're using somebody else's flashlight, it is a good idea to cover that flashlight and tape because you will scratch it. And some people don't like their safe queens scratched. side you notice all this is black this is everything that we have to block out even though we are using uh, all this stuff we still have to take in consideration that there is a safety switch it doesn't come on all of them but it comes on a majority of them so we do have to keep that in mind so this one is going to go this way and we're going to lock it right there Again, our retention point is right here. over lock that down all right now we know the controls come to about here and we have this sweet piece of blocking 
I have multiple ones of these. This is from Steve Andrews over at uh, Knife Kits or Holstersmith. These are definitely awesome because look at that. So we know it comes out here. We're going to have to go up here anyway for the safety. But not just that, we have to prop that up as well. So that is perfect. And we are just going to lock that down. All right, now with the uh, the hoods, I like to put this right at the end. So that's gonna sit right here and we want it low enough to where it's not gonna overhang the top and right there is perfect. So we'll go ahead, lock that in place. And below that, we're doing the RTI plate, which follows that contour. Awesome. And we're going to go ahead and do that as well. So we'll lock that right there. If you notice, I'm using the edge of my pencil to get nice right angle folds on the, uh, the tape. Because if you just like do this, the pressure here and the pressure here at the same time from the foam won't allow the tape to go down so you're not going to get good definition so the better your tape lies the better definition you will have in your press and i like to do all these in x patterns and then use your blocking to get it down in between other pieces of blocking and that will help with everything. So there's one side. And we know it's gonna be on the other side, straight across, so right around there. And we'll check it, so it's gotta go up just a little bit. And we know that there is, uh, there potentially could be a safety on this side as well. And what we're gonna do to that is we'll take this blocking and we know it's going to go there and if those intersect that's where it needs to go and he's also equipped with uh, ambidextrous mag releases and that covers the mag release Almost there. So we know, even though I covered it, there it is, right here. So we're gonna put this right about right about there. Enough room so we can get the cut over it, and enough so it doesn't interfere with your RMR cut. When I first started doing holsters, I used a, a pile of three pennies, three pennies taped together was the perfect diameter for the top of this and it looked good. Then I started using this guy, mainly because I liked it better. But figure out what you like, figure out what works for you, and you will pretty much figure out your own like signature holster. And then keep doing it. And practice, practice, practice. So as we're still learning, or as I'm, you know, as I keep doing this, I myself, you know, continue to learn with blocking techniques and all this stuff and heat and pressure and time and all that good stuff. All right, next step is the retention plate because this is going to be taco style. So that is all set and we're just going to have to put the retention plate on and then I'll cut a piece of gunmetal gray and we'll get this going. And we are fresh out of the press. And ooh-wee, it looks good. Let's get it apart. It sounds like something's stuck inside. Ah. All right. 
right, let's get this bad boy drilled and shaped. And what I do is I'll take a one of my small bits, which is five thirty seconds. Take the RTI thirty four. Place it where you want it. And just start the holes. You don't have to go all the way through. You can if you want to. But I don't. Alright. I use my body to control the drill. It's easier when it's closer. And that way you don't punch through to the other side. All right, so now I'm gonna line this guy up. And we're going to draw where our finger slot is and then continue the rest. And this is, I went back and looked at it, this is our mark cut and suppressor height sights, so I added the suppressor height sights uh, before I threw it in the press. All right, we're going to put one here, one here, and just shape it how you want it. And maybe that's a little too extreme. There we go. We will drill those holes. I'm actually going to spread that out just a little bit more. And those holes are 7.30 seconds. This is our countersink tool. I use it to deburr. And we're gonna go ahead and cut it out. Alright. Cut it, sanded it, shaped it. Do a quick little polish. This is a 120 grit drywall sanding sponge. And it works absolutely awesome. Get your little burrs that you miss when you hit it with the sanding wheel. Alright. What I'm gonna do now is take my microfiber, spray it down. I'm using REM oil right now. I know it's kind of hard to find REM oil since they're out of business. You could also use ballastol. I know I mentioned that in uh, I think actually the previous video. I don't know what ballastol looks like. That guy right there. Great stuff as well. All right. Big mama. So we're going to take our NC2000, our RC2000. It's made by uh, Noga. RC2000. And this is the tool that we use to deeper inside without scratching or mucking up anything else if you accidentally nick it with another uh, like a razor blade or something like that that's what I used to do and uh, a gentleman who subscribed to my channel mentioned one of these and my man this thing's amazing on Amazon it's like 32 bucks Inside looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna go get the hardware. So the hardware that comes with it. This is the hardware that comes with the the hood. So we're gonna use that for the hood, and I actually use the screws for the RTI plate. And then I'll use the quarter inch and the hex bit. 
but I won't use this one. I throw that in my bin. And that is for this guy. And I will grab, let's see here, this is the hardware that comes with this. I do not use this. I'll show you what I grab. All right, so this is a .435, I wanna say. I use three of those bushings. These are half inch posts. So we'll get three of those. We're going to do an eighth inch rubber. And then we're going to grab three of these .375 instead of what comes with it. All right, and then for our retention, we go ahead and grab quarter inch and then .4375. And that's these guys right here. If you're like me, you could cut your own. This is Continental uh, windshield wiper radiator overflow tubing, part number 65112. I just go ahead and I buy it by the 50 foot spool and I have these SNS cutters. Things are awesome. And you just cut them to the size that you need. All right, we're just gonna separate our hardware now. So we got all of our half inches right there. These are the 0.4375s. These are our retention. We're gonna take two of those those for retention that's retention and that's going to be for the let's see here so that's the hood that's the rti plate and then this is part of the hood as well so i'm going to go ahead and do all of the screws except for the retention all right then i take clear kydex and we're going to make that bracket that goes right here that makes this super strong with no flex i've done a lot of these and this is just a scrap piece that i use so whatever fits so hold it pretty good take a marker just do the center of the holes Then I'm going to drill it out and then cut it. And as promised, here it is right here. And what we're going to do is the fun stuff. Take your half inch, put those to the top of the RTI location. Take your plate and then take your .4375 and put that right on. And then repeat that with the second one. Now take your three smaller threaded posts, get those on there, and then we're going to take our hood with the shorter screws and put those in there. And get them all started, square it up, hold it in place. bottom two you could put as tight as you want the top one do not go super tight just go till it's snug because that is the pivot point and if you go too much it will literally just do this or it'll lock in place so you want to keep that in mind then take your third half inch one with your 0.4375 get the crap out of your rti plate and then take the longer screws in there and do that. And this is the reason why we use the longer screws. Get them all started before you tighten. There we go. Tighten the bottom. And what I do is I generally look straight down and I line this up with that. Now, it's a good idea to have an RTI plate handy because you gotta verify that it clears everything. So at this point, there's plenty of clearance right here. Now the older G-code setups have a bolt right here. They're not riveted. So if that bolt's there, then it would hit it. But if that bolt's, since the bolt's not there, this won't. But even if that is there, the distance between this won't hit it. So we're not sure if this gentleman has it or not now, actually. Nope, he's getting one with this. So we can technically, if we wanted to, this is a brand new one, go closer. If he wants, he can tighten that up, go closer. I'm going to leave it as it is, just in case he has another platform or another thing he wants to use. 
And we'll go ahead and get our retention in. And launch everything. Let's try that again. And this is the perks of having a handheld drill. Much easier to uh, hold the threaded post and then get it started without you know, tweaking your wrist or anything like that. So I'll set it to where it would look good. Of course, we still have this. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Okay. And we'll leave that in. Fold this down. And then we'll take it and then go over. And see where this needs to go. And what we'll do is we'll drill that. And then we're going to throw the quarter inch guy in. Our eighth inch spacer. And we're going to grab our 330 seconds. And bolt that in place. Now if you notice that, that if you go as tight as you possibly can, it'll just keep going. Which is good because you want the head of this to bottom out against that which will allow you to keep that screw super tight and let the uh, Loctite dry. And it'll allow this to, uh, to pivot, which is very, very good. So, put it in, it's nice. Make sure it clears, bam. Awesome. I like it. Jose, I hope you like this, man. Came out absolutely stellar. So, for those of you who are not familiar with the uh, the G-Code as well, it's got this lock plate right here. And you take it, you put it on whatever holes are, are, you know, the appropriate for the style, and then this switch right here, you just, now it's locked in place. So when you're wearing this on your thigh, you go ahead and unlock it, take this holster off, put on the next holster, you can literally do anything you want, which is the perks of this system, which is nice. And you can also, get a paddle with it on it. So instead of a drop, you can actually have a paddle and you can also get an RTI right here. So you can put the paddle on your belt, attach your thigh rig, and you got that. Then you can disconnect your thigh rig and then put this on here. So, and now you have it on your belt, and then you can take it off and put it on your uh, your vest with a molly attachment. So it's a pretty awesome setup. Gco does good work, and I am glad that I use their stuff. So again, that's how you do the thigh rig for the M and P four inch with TLR seven. Happy bending.